Okay, so that's what we're going to do today is a problem just like this one. In fact, it's like I kind of based today's lecture around this. It's a very similar problem. So it's a big, long, nasty, complicated circuit. So we're going to end up here with five different currents. And then we're going to find the voltage drop, the current, and the power across each resistor. Uh, when you turn in this assignment and the other one, make sure you include units on every one of these. So all the way down, you should have voltages, you know, volts, amps, watts all the way down. Uh, you'll see, like I didn't leave you a lot of space here because I don't want to see a whole, it's a system of five equations and five variables. I don't even want to see all the algebra to solve it. I just want you to show me your loops, uh, write out what the equations are, and then use either your calculator or something like Wolfram Alpha to solve the system, and then just write down all the answers. Okay, so let's do a similar problem. So I've got this circuit here. All right, so on the, the, the actual group assignment, I told you how I wanted you to label all the currents. This one I'm not told, so I'm gonna have to make that up. So I'm gonna say, let's assume we have I1 coming out of the big end, the positive end of the bigger battery. See, we have two batteries here. And at first we don't know which battery is going to win. One of these, we may end up with the current going backwards through a battery. So the general assumption you should make is just assume the bigger battery is going to win. It's not always the case. If you end up getting one of these backwards, if this I1 actually goes down instead of up, when I solve my system, I'll end up with I1 equals negative half an amp or whatever. And all that means is I drew this little arrow wrong. Doesn't affect any of the math whatsoever. I just completely ignore the negative. If you get a negative current, it just means you made a wrong assumption in your direction of your current. Your math is probably okay. All right, so I1 still going here. Now I reach a junction. So we're going to use the junction rule. That current right there is going to split up. Some I'm assuming is going to come down this way, and some is going to split this way. Again, maybe I've got that wrong. This battery wants to send current up. Current wants to come out of the positive side. So maybe I3 actually goes down backwards goes to the left and then these two one and three join together and add up to two so maybe i've got i3 wrong i don't care it'll all wash out in the end okay here's another junction so i'm going to have a current that's flowing down here i'm assuming that I4 is going to go backwards through this current. Maybe I'm wrong, don't really care. And I5 is going to come this way. So this is still five. I like to go all the way around through all my resistors and write down what current is going through them. So still five here. Now we've joined back together, four comes through here. Five comes around, those two add back together to get me back to three. So I'm back at I3 here. Two is coming, three is coming. Those join back together to get me back to I1 here. Okay, so from my junction rules, let me make this guy bigger. I can write out a few equations. I got five unknowns, I'm gonna need five equations. Right there at that junction, I know I1 is two plus three. So there's equation number one. And I know right here, I'm coming in with I3, the current in should equal the currents out. I3 should equal four plus five.
there's equation two. Now I could, I could try to do another junction rule here, but that's just gonna be four plus five equals three again. I've already got that, same thing there. That's just two plus three equals one again. So I'm not gonna get anything new out of these other junctions. All right, now I need to use my loop rules. Let's, uh, let's go with blue here. There are a bunch of different loops I could draw. I could draw a loop that goes around right here. I could draw one that goes around here. I could draw one that goes all the way around. I could have a loop just in this section. I could have a loop in this section. I could have a loop in this section. So what was that? Six different loops I could draw. They're redundant. I don't need to draw them all. I need five equations total, so I need three loops. So sure, I'll use this one. Let's call this loop number one. Uh, I'm going to, I want to keep my equations here. I'm numbering the equations. I'll use box numbers for my loop. Now you have to pick a direction on your loop. That's the important part, the direction of the loop. Around that loop, so for loop number one, I'll even write loop. My, my pen is messing up today. Loop one. The sum of the voltages all the way around that loop have to add up to zero. And our convention is if your loop goes through a battery the correct way from negative to positive, it's a voltage rise. You're going up in voltage. I'm going from low negative up to high positive. That's a voltage rise. So through the battery, we only care about the direction of the loop. We really don't even care about the current going through the battery. Which direction does the loop go through the battery? If it goes through the correct direction, it's a rise. If it goes backwards, positive to negative, it's a drop. So I have a voltage rise there of 12. Okay, now my current goes through this resistor. Now's where I look at the current and the loop. If the current and the loop go the same direction through a resistor, it's a drop. Batteries want to be rises. Resistors want to be drops. That's kind of the standard. When things go backwards is when you end up with the opposite. If your loop my loop is going this direction, right there, look at that. My loop is going left to right. My current is also going left to right through R2 right there. They're going the same direction, that makes that a drop. With resistors, same as a drop, opposite is a rise. So I have a, a voltage drop through R2 there. And what's the voltage? Ohm's all, V equals IR. So I1 times two. So minus two I1. Okay, what else does this loop do? It goes right here. So at this point in the loop, I'm flowing down. I2 is also flowing down. Through this resistor, my loop and my current are going the same direction. They're both going down. That makes it a drop. So minus three I2, it's a different resist or different current, that's I2, that must equal zero. There's equation number three. All right, let's pick another loop. I'll do purple. Now I can, I got all kinds of choices here. I could do a loop that goes all the way around here. Then I, if I do that, I'm gonna have I1 and I3 and I4 
all in there. I could do all the way around. That's going to have all of my currents in it. I could do in here. I could do in here. I could do right here. And I'm literally just going to pick one at random. I'm going to say maybe right here. And I have to pick a direction. I'm going to assume I'm flowing clockwise like this. I only care about going through batteries and resistors. Okay, so I've got I4, there's I4 going down my current. Let's uh, label this guy. This is loop number two. Current and resistor, current's going down. My loop is also going down at that spot. That's a voltage drop. So loop three. Sorry, loop two. I'm going to have negative I4 times my current or uh, resistance, negative four I2. Okay, now my loop. Don't care about the current. The loop is going through the battery backwards. I'm going from positive to negative. I'm forcing my loop backwards through my battery, that'll make it a voltage drop. I'm going to drop by 10 volts. So minus 10. That's already a voltage. I don't have to multiply anything. Through the resistors, V equals IR. Through the battery, V is V. It's the battery. Okay, and then I go along here, but there are no resistors there. Then my current comes up here. So notice my current is flowing down should have said my loop is flowing up, my current's flowing down. My loop and current are going against each other. That means this voltage will be a voltage rise. Going the wrong way through a resistor is a rise. Going the wrong way through a battery is a drop. So I'll have a plus 3I2. And I see now, right there, that was supposed to be 4I4 at the beginning. That's, that's a typo right there. Let me fix that. And that should equal zero. That's equation number four. I need one more loop because I need five equations total. There are several different loops I could draw but they're not going to add anything in. I don't know, maybe this one right here. Sometimes, if you're going to solve these by hand, you can judiciously pick certain loops where you only have one current in there, and you can just easily solve for that current. If you're going to solve this by hand, sometimes it's better to take the time to pick which loops you want. In this case, I really don't think it's going to make any difference. I don't think any of these are going to be easier or harder. So I'm just going to pick this loop. I pretty much always go um, clockwise with my loops, but there's no rule that says you have to. OK, so here's loop three. I've got a lot of stuff running in the background, so my My marker is acting up. I've got some memory issues going on. Okay, so around here, I've got this resistor, this battery, and this resistor. So I've got I5 flowing down, and my loop is flowing down. I'm going through the resistor the correct way. That makes him a drop. So I'm going to have 5 I5. So negative 5I5. If your loop and current go the same direction, it's a voltage drop through a resistor. Okay, now my loop comes around. My loop over here is flowing up through this battery. I'm going from negative to positive. That's a rise. That's the way you're supposed to go through a battery. That's the way current wants to flow through a battery. And batteries rise current up. So here I'll have a rise of 10. OK, 
Okay, now what about this guy? I4 is going down. My loop is going up. I'm going the wrong, I'm fighting against the current. My loop flows the opposite way of that current. So I'm going to get the opposite behavior through this resistor. Instead of being a drop like resistors usually are, this will be a rise. So I have a plus four I4. equals zero. And that is equation five. Now I could solve these by hand. Like for example, I could add these two together and the I4s would cancel. Heck, even the tens would cancel. And then do a whole bunch of back substituting. Honestly, if it were me, I would probably solve it by hand. But there's a whole lot of algebra, a whole lot of places we can go wrong. So it's going to be much easier if we let our, our technology solve this. So what I want to see from you is what I've drawn out here. All of our loops, like all this work here, writing the equations. And then from here, I don't care how you solve. I could type these equations into Wolfram Alpha and it would solve it. I probably won't be able to get away with I1. I, I probably had to call them like X, Y, Z. I'd have to give them names. But Wolfram Alpha can solve systems of equations. And so can your calculator. So I'm going to do this on the calculator. So I'm going to put all of these equations in kind of a standard form, like uh, A I1. Four plus E I five equals F. I'm going to write all of the equations with all of the variables on one side. And if I have any constants left over on the other side. So equation one, moving everything to one side, I'm going to get one I one minus one I two. One, I three. Uh, I want this. I don't want to use orange anymore. I'm going to go back to using black. Okay, so equation one will be one minus one, I two minus one, I three minus or plus zero I4 plus zero I5 equals zero. Equation two, again, I want to keep everything nice and lined up. It's going to make typing it into the calculator, into the matrix much easier. So I don't have a one or a two, so he's going to be zero I one plus zero I two plus one I three minus one I four minus one I five equals zero. Equation three, writing it the same way. Let's see, I do not have, I do. Um, maybe it'd be better if I move these two guys to the other side to make them positive. So I'm going to move that 2i1, the 3i2, both to the other side to make them positive. And I'll have 2i1 plus 3i2. All the rest of these are zero. And that will equal 12. Equation four. Okay, so I'm going to have to move this 10 to the other side. The constant goes on the other side. I don't have an I1. 
literally just looked at it. 3i2. I don't think there's an I3, right? But there is an I4, and even negative. No I5. And what did that equal? 10. We're getting there. We're, we're om almost done with the hard part. And then if Equation five. So it, it doesn't matter. I could move the eyes to the other side and keep this positive 10. Let's do that. I mean, I can multiply the whole thing by negative one. It doesn't matter who I move over. So I'm going to move the eyes to the other side. So I'm going to have a negative four I4 four, and a plus five I5. Five. So zero I1. Zero I two, a zero I three, a negative four I four, plus five I five, and that will equal ten. Okay, now I can write this in matrix form. That was the whole point of doing that. I want to write this as some matrix times some vector equals some solution vector. So my matrix, all my coefficients will be 1, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0. I'm going to need more space here. One, negative one, negative one, zero, zero, and then zero, zero, one, negative one, negative one, two, three, zero, 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 three, zero. Four zero and zero 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 negative four five. There's my matrix A times my vector I one, I two, I three, five should equal. I want to fit this all together into one thing. So I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. should equal my coefficient matrix over here, my or my uh, solution matrix, which is what? 0, 0, 12, 10, 10. OK, now I've got a matrix equation. You guys all took pre-calculus. You know how to solve matrix equations. We could do a whole bunch of row operations on this. We could use Kramer's rule. We could uh, write the augmented matrix and do row operations. It, you learned a bunch of ways. The easiest way is just use our calculator. So, excuse me, I want to put in the calculator the augmented matrix. So I want to take my coefficient matrix here and tack on this solution vector over on the side. I never wanted it. I never draw these long enough. So I'm just taking this matrix here, rewriting it, and putting these guys at the end. So that would be 1, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 0. OK, 
10, and then the last row, 0, 0, 0, negative 4, 5, 10. Okay, so I've got my augmented matrix. It is a 5 by 6. Remember, it's always rows by columns. How many rows you have versus columns. It's a 5 by 6 matrix. I can now type this into my calculator and it will do all the work for me. So I'm going to come here into matrix. Notice these blues. So I have to go second to get there. And I'm going to edit one of these. So let's edit matrix A. He is five by six. Oops. Five, enter, six. Hey, now I just got to type in all those coefficients. And as I type, it's just going to go across the top. And when I get to the end, it will automatically move on to the next row. So one, enter, see, it will go across. Now you got to be careful here. This is your minus button. That's your negative button. So I want negative one. Negative one. Zero, zero, zero. I'm on this zero right now. And then when I hit enter, it automatically takes me to the next row. Zero, one. I'm right here in this row. Negative one, negative one. Negative one, zero. Two, three, zero, 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 twelve. I'm almost done. Uh, where am I right here? Three, zero, negative four, zero, ten. Again, negative. Remember, use the negative button, not the minus button. Five and ten. OK, so I got my whole matrix in here. Now, I have a habit of messing up at this moment right here, of going and trying to do math, and I accidentally screw up my matrix. So my recommendation is once you get the matrix in there, get out of there. Quit. And then I think it's also a good idea to look at the matrix and make sure it's right. So I'm going to go back into the matrix here. I'm just going to pick matrix A and hit Enter. And then look at it and make sure I got everything right. Because it's really easy to type these wrong. So let's quickly glance through there. OK, so that's at least what I wrote here, assuming all of this was correct, that these are the same. OK, now I want to go back into Matrix, go over to Math, and go down to Row Reduced echelon form, R-R-E-F, B. And it's going to ask me, of what? Now, you might think, well, there's an A right there. Look at that little A. It won't take. It, I have to actually go into the matrix menu and grab it. So I'm hitting, I'm on A, hit Enter. And now it'll say, OK, RREF of the matrix A. And we're done. This should be the identity matrix, the 5 by 5 identity matrix. And then here are all my solutions. There's I1, I2. Oh, look, we got I4 backwards. Don't care at all. I don't even have to go up and fix my picture. In my picture, I assumed that I4 Let's go up here and look. Which one was I4? I assumed that it was going to flow down. I had it wrong. I4 actually flows up. So this equation really should be I3 plus I4 equals I5. Don't care. I don't have to fix anything. I don't have to go back and change the picture. I don't have to change any of my equations. When I write down I4, I'm literally just going to write the positive version. That's it. Don't stress at all. 
it's very likely you may have picked the wrong direction on one of your currents. If it comes out negative, not a problem. Literally just ignore the negative. Hey, we could, by the way, I could go here into math and hit into fraction and turn those all into fractions if I wanted. But those fractions are kind of nasty, so I'm just going to leave them decimals. Either way, I don't care. All right, so let's write down what we got. So we get. Where am I? Here, I1. I'm going to have to go back and forth here. Let's go 2.69 amps. I2 is 2.21. Don't forget your amps. Three. 0.48, I4, again, I'm just going to ignore that negative, don't really care about it, uh, 0.84, and I5, 1.0, Okay, there are all my currents. Now I want to find the voltage drop and the power through each resistor. So I had, what were my resistors? R1 had six different resistors, is that right? There's no R1. <laughs> I guess it called that, when I, I used um, this online software to build this. And I wasn't paying attention as it was labeling them. Huh, there's no R1. Doesn't matter. I really all I care about are the resistances. So let's look at R2 here. I'm not going to do all of these. I'm just going to get you started. R2, he was 2 ohms. He was the 2 ohm resistor. He's going to have a voltage, a current, and a power. Now I have a voltage drop. We just make it positive. Don't care. His current and his power. Which current flows through R2? That was I1. So I'm going to have to look at my picture and figure out which current to use. I1 was 2.69 amps. Okay, how am I going to find the voltage drop? V equals IR. So once I've got the I, V is easy, just multiply by R. So 2 times 2.69, I think I had 5.38 volts. And I got to put my little V here for volts. I wish we used a different symbol for voltage. Like our variable and our unit have the same letter. This says what was the voltage drop, the potential difference across that resistor. This says it was five volts. That's the unit, that's the variable. They should not have the same letter, but unfortunately they do. Okay, then power. For power, I could use IV. Or V equals IR, so I could use V squared over R or I squared R. I could use any of these. Well, this is the easiest one. I already have those two numbers right there. So I'm just going to use IV. Just multiply the voltage times the current. So that last number times 2.69. 14.47 watts. And you're going to do that for each resistor, dot, dot, dot. Find the voltage, the current, 
all your currents should be positive. Don't stress about, oh, I know that guy was, who cares? All your currents will be positive. All your voltage drops. These are all drops will all be positive. And that's what we're measuring here. So powers are all positive. That's power lost in heat. Or these resistors might be light bulbs. Maybe we're expanding power to create light and heat. Maybe we're running a motor. I don't know. These are, who knows what these resistors are doing. That's power that this battery, these batteries are losing. By the way, we are, uh, we're not going through this battery backwards. So we would not be charging this battery. This circuit would not charge that battery. Uh, we'd, if we uh, put the battery over here instead, I think it would have charged it. I don't know, we'd have to solve that circuit and see. Okay, that's a good place to stop.